What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel for another weekly update. Hope everybody's having a lovely Saturday. And with that being said, let's get into the TA, guys. Uh, please leave a like and let's get into it. All right, so we're going to start things off with QQQ over here on the weekly time frame. All right, so we do have increasing buy volume on the weekly time frame to close out the week. We do have this big old green candlestick over here and i'm going to take you over to spy we do have a dragonfly doji candlestick over here on the weekly with that increasing volume as well and i'm going to point out that this is a uh off of the pattern site.com this is just a candlestick that brings a reversal 50 percent of the time whether you see it at the top or whether you see it at the bottom all right uh it's you know it is what it is all right and we are now seeing that at the top but keep in mind all right we do have that increasing buy volume that does suggest the buyers likely get their way going into this week now how do they get their way they get their way with a gap up to start the week off or they get their way by taking you over last week's highs which here on spy would be over here at 42077 and then you come over here to qqq the highs was uh 349.25 pretty crazy all right so qq literally rallied right on up into its uh 348.50 gap fill right up here you do have your next resistance going to be up here at uh, 359.93. We can actually make a zone out of that. All right, let's just uh, pull it like that. Is that covering that? Yeah. All right, let's go a little like this and a little like that. There you go. All right, so this is the next zone of... Uh, we really got to be watching over here. Let's make you red. Why are you not like this? Around 39 over here. What are you on over here? All right, you are on a 9%. Let's make you 30. Let's make you 40. Yeah, 40. Yeah, uh, uh, uh. Can I not get there? Can't. Oh, okay, we're going to settle at 39. All right, guys. So this is going to be the uh, next uh, like reaction spot you got going on over here on QQ. But I'm just going to show you this, right? You do have your weekly RSI ticking all the way up here to above 70. I'm just going to point out, guys, this is not something that happened in the dot-com bubble burst. It's not something that happened in the 08 crash, all right, um, after COVID, all right, once you got up here, you were off the race. So this is something I want everyone to just keep in mind, all right? Uh, I don't have a bias here on the channel. I do my absolute best to bring you guys unbiased information each and every video. Uh, if you are new here to the channel, my guarantee to you is that you are going to find insights on SpyQQ and VIX here that you are not going to find across the interwebs. Not only are you going to find those insights, but they will continuously pop up week after week. That's my guarantee to you. Um, but over here, you see, like literally, you did not have this happen for like two or three years <laughs> and from when you started this bubble burst. So um, I'm just going to point out, guys, things are different. History does not have to repeat itself. Now, that brings me to the next uh, topic of discussion here, which is the debt ceiling agreement we have the deadline on june 1st but i actually i saw a tweet uh the other day that was saying the actual deadline behind the scenes is actually like the sixth or the seventh so um that is something to point out so maybe the market doesn't go into freak out mode uh maybe we have all the way to the sixth or the seventh i don't know i'm just saying all right that is that is the thing but regardless guys we have 2011 all right so let's bring it back to 2011 what took place 2011 we had this going on all right no, nope, we did not have this going on. We had this going on. Yes. All right. It was right over here. So this is on the weekly time frame. And in the span of three weeks, now two weeks here, all right, you fell 13%. All right. In the span of four weeks, you fell 17%. So, um, yeah, that is uh, likely what a lot of people think is about to go down. Now, that is why I said, all right, what I just brought up here, all right, you have QQQ's RSI over here. In overbought territory this is on the week of time frame this is something that hasn't happened before this is literally showing us the proof of what i'm talking about all right it's history does not repeat itself it rhymes and guess what guys we are in unprecedented time so like yeah if you think you know what comes next you don't and you're just lying to yourself and that's 100 percent a fact all right no if ands or buts facts don't care about your feelings and that is just how it is all right anybody who uh traded this week with a bias i'm gonna tell you you didn't have a fun time. You didn't, all right? Uh, well, unless you had a long bias and you just, you know, you just went long. There was that, all right? But if you guys, if you had your bearish bias because you were like, oh, yeah, debt ceiling, debt ceiling, there's that, all right? Guess what? 
The tech duels continued <laughs> telling us uh, to this day right here, it said we were going to uh, likely be, you know, buyers were going to get their way, all right? Then this day, you also had the increasing buy volume. And then this day comes out and you have another 2.5% day. So uh, yeah, guys, you don't know what comes next. You really don't. If you think you do, you're, you're lying to yourself and it's you're trying to, you know, hide your ego or you're trying to shield your ego, I guess. Um, now, what I will say is Apple over here, did not have that increase in buy volume. So that is something you want to see. Now I'm going to come over here to NVIDIA. All right, NVIDIA, guys, is something that is 100% clear as day. All right, we're in the blow-off top phase. Um, we could be in this phase over here, and you could just be getting warmed up. I got no idea. All right, this is, uh, like I said, unprecedented times. This is something that hasn't been happening. All right, you had the, the dot-com, you know, bubble mania over there. Well, guess what, guys? If this really is a bubble, this thing... Uh, uh, let's look at it this way pltr all right pltr is like one of these main at least like this was main my, like this is why i was obsessed with pltr i was like oh ai is literally going to you know like in the coming one to two years we're gonna be there all right so like your boy when he got like addicted to the stock market what do you think that was on all right over here on your boy pltr um i was married to this thing and this thing still hasn't taken off. Like, it has taken off, all right? I can't say it hasn't, all right? It's, it's gone up double, but compared to what these other things are doing, all right, I would just imagine PLTR is likely going to be getting some love, and uh, I would like to see that happen. Now, I'm also going to point out, we haven't seen small caps pump yet. Like, like really? Well, I mean, you, you had this going on over here, all right? So that was the thing. Um, and you did have this uh, pump over there. But then, like like I'm saying, NVIDIA, all right? If people are really trying to, you know, hop on this trend, and guys, capital, I, I, I said in my last video, guys, someone's buying this thing, all right? You can, like, tell yourself, oh, it's just the shorts doing it. It's just, uh, you know, like, oh, it makes those sense manipulation. Who cares? None of that matters. Someone's buying it. It's simple market dynamics, and if you don't understand supply and demand, I'm sorry, but, like, hey, that's where you gotta start, all right? You gotta go there. Guess what? There is a buyer here. All right. This thing is up 24%. Now, someone left a comment saying um, maybe they did this to uh, so they can short calls to go with their shares or something like that. Yeah, that's a possibility. All right. That is a possibility. They, they would be able to short the calls, but I'm just going to say right now. All right. Well, then again, all right. The people shorted the calls down here before earnings. All right. Uh, if you're short of the 350, 360, any of these calls that were going for hundreds in, in premium. All right. And, um, you know, you just, you're like, oh, that is 10, 20% out the money. It's not going to go in the money. All right, guess what? You had to pay out like 10, 20, 30, 40 fold, all right? So, uh, yeah, all right? Uh, I'm just saying, uh, anyone who shorted calls over here, you're kind of crazy. Uh, you're definitely kind of crazy. Obviously, it's bigger money. And if someone did this move just so they can do that, then yeah, they know that. I am going to point out you did have increasing sell volume over here. All right, which just does show like, hey, once you had the initial gap up, even though you have this massive volume, more than half of it was sell volume. All right. So, yeah, if you're going along up here and on AI stocks and stuff like that, I'm going to tell you, hey, uh, you're going to at least want to look at least how I would be looking at this thing. If you're like, I'm not playing this thing, I promise. All right. Uh, but yeah, your best shot is waiting for that pullback and waiting to see if you can make a higher low straight up. All right, you you take your risk where support is at. That's going to be down here at the gap pill. All right, the gap pill is going to be all the way down here at 30607. So that is pretty rough. All right, pretty rough. Let's come over to make that green. 30607. Throwback to when this thing was at 240. All right, I remember those days. There was that. Let's take out the zone here. All right, and let's actually get rid of. Nope, not that one. I want to rid of the other one i'm gonna get rid of that blue one right there all right let's get rid of that all right because now we do have this massive gap that needs to be filled all right and i'm not saying it's going to be filled immediately i'm actually uh I'm, I'm gonna be honest all right i think we're probably gonna go a little higher this week all right i think you're probably gonna go a little higher than uh this 348 50 gap fill or uh, i'm not even gonna say that as we guys as we get a closer to this debt ceiling deadline all right like like there's two there's one way this thing goes and it's down all right i'm, I'm gonna be straight up with you all right um we are seeing a blow off top style move all right uh i told you guys all right i wasn't seeing that over here on apple maybe we're gonna see that eventually i think we're seeing that on nvidia and that was the thing carrying the market 
You got that going on. You come over here to Microsoft. You got that going on as well. All right. Um, but the deadline. All right. The deadline, guys. It only brings one thing, and it's downside. It and that's how I'm seeing it. All right. You guys can look at this like, hey, all right. If you have seen different information than me, then you can, you know, you can go off of that info. But if I'm understanding things correctly, they come to an agreement. They issue a crap ton of debt. That takes liquidity out of this market, goes and brings it over to the bond market. There you go. All right. The stonks go down. All right. They they don't come to an agreement. You get a 2000 free, 2011 style freakout. Now, I don't think that's... I'm going to be straight up with you guys on that one. I don't think that's going to happen. With everyone sitting here betting on it, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I, I Well, maybe they're not betting on it. All right. But let's just come over to this June 16 uh, monthly OPEX over here. All right, guys, we uh, I think we have like a window to see some down. They're like, obviously, guys, if we're going to crash. We're going to crash. Right. Like it's it, then, you know, technicals are they're going to be thrown out the window. And who even cares? All right. Who cares? But guess what? Until that happens, like, no, we're going to sit here talking about this stuff. Um, come over here to puts. All right. Come over here to the June 16 OPEX. All right. Um. And that's what I was saying, all right? Like, you, you have a window right now because you have all these... You, guys, this is a heavy uh, put OPEX, like, straight up. Let's look at both here, and let's bring you over here. All right, over... Nope, not over here. Where's my volume? All right. All right, I guess volume is over there. All right, let's bring you over there. Open interest, 390 strike, 160K. 385, 106K. 113K. All right, 395, 82K. 400, one, 181,000, all right? That is a lot of puts, guys. 75K already at the 405 strike. 80K at the 410 strike. 415, you have 40,000 already, all right? This is a heavy uh, to put expiration, like straight up. You have the same look that you had on the May OPEX, except more. So, yeah, all right? We very much can just stick with this kangaroo market, and that's why I was saying, like, I started the video off by saying, like, hey, you guys don't know what comes next. Just like I don't know what comes next, you don't know what comes next, all right? And if you're going to convince yourself that you do know what comes next, you're going to put yourself in situations that you can't handle, and yeah, all right? Then you're going to be just... Yeah, all right? That's, that's literally it, all right, guys? If you think you know what's going to happen, you're always going to put yourself in a situation that's just... I, what you really should be doing all right it's not what you got to do um yeah maybe you make a lot of money if this thing tanks but hey all right why uh i bet the farm all right because in reality guys all right if they do come to that debt ceiling agreement i imagine you would get an upward uh an initial like you know a knee-jerk reaction to the upside uh followed by that sell-off over the following days because they're gonna issue that debt so um and again, I, I could be completely, you know, just misunderstanding all of this and or misinterpreting it. I don't know. All right. I got absolutely no idea. I'm just a guy here on YouTube. All right. And I'm actually going to point out you do have increasing buy volume over here on SPY on the daily time frame. Uh, you did not on SPX. We do on SPY. So that does also uh, it does suggest we're going to be making, uh, you know, either higher, higher. We're going to be gapping up on Monday. This or not Monday, Tuesday, guys. Happy Memorial Day weekend, by the way. Everybody's, uh, you know, if you got family, you're seeing your family or whatever you're doing. I hope you're having a good weekend. Maybe you're grilling. I don't know. I hope it's really good. Um, yeah, guys. All right. Um, we're up here. All right. Anything can happen. But yeah, in reality, I do think we are in a massive topping process. And I think we are about to uh, see things hit the fan. I, I think you are. Um, but again, all right, this could just be for one to two weeks. And then you could see... The kangaroo market come back, all right? We could literally see this happen, all right? Because look at it this way, all right? June 16 expiration puts. Maybe those are just hedges, all right? And maybe they get in the money and then people don't take profits on them. And then what? It, what it, what's in the dealer's best interest then to take them out of the money, all right? So maybe they get in the money originally, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think they stay in the money. We do have all these gaps to fill, though. We have uh, two gaps to the upside. We have four gaps to downside. So I do think those are likely to uh, start getting filled. Uh, you know, going coming around this whole debt ceiling debacle going on. All right, just like we had the banking fiasco over here. All right, that really got the fear and greed index. Which I'm just going to tell you right now, the things at 68 right now. So yeah, the market is definitely still, you know, it's still greedy. We do have the June 16 monthly optics there put loaded but i i really do think that's just people like just sitting there with hedges they haven't moved they've been there they were there when we still had the main it optics out and about um 
So yeah, all right. But uh, what I'm getting at, guys, is I'm not going to be surprised at all if you see something like this go down. All right, you come down here, all right. Oh, now you're 12th, all right, into the 16th. Maybe you get sick, nasty squeeze. I don't know, all right. Or you come down here, you know, maybe into, I don't know, into the end of the week here, all right. And then you start that whole week. You just get one sick, nasty rally back up, all right, that uh, pretty much you're going to see all these, you know, the, the monthly optics. You're going to see all those options on wine, the hedges on wine. So uh, if that does happen, that would be the outcome right there, right? That is a possible scenario on the board, and that's why I say we don't know what comes next. We're just going to prepare for anything, all right? Um, now, I am going to say right here, we're going to take it over to ES. Um, ES, all right, I told you guys, we, uh, you know, it proved itself that it's not, this wasn't a strong move. This was a fake breakout over here, all right? This, like, when you were doing this over here, all right? You came right back into it, and then you actually made a new low. All right, you went lower than where that move actually started from. So, that is not strength in my personal opinion. All right, uh, the only thing that would be making this thing go up is, uh, yeah, I, I think they are doing a sick nasty bull trap into what I just described. Like, hey, it's a lose lose situation with this whole debt ceiling thing. It really, at least, that's how I'm interpreting it. Again, I, it's all all you're finding here on this channel is speculation. Everything's by opinion, but hey. I'm uh, pretty sure I'm making sense of that thing, and yeah, it doesn't make sense to me but for stonks to go up. Um, but again, like, you know, if there's buyers, there's buyers, but then you got, you know, you got liquidity in the mix, all right? When, you know, when the Fed puts liquidity into the market, you see them, you see spy and cookie go up. That's just what happens, right? So, um, you know, take that out, go down. Even if there are buyers, which I'm just going to say, the fact that these divergences are getting burned, that shows me that, yeah, buyers are stepping up. All right, because all divergence shows you is that the price action, what you're seeing, is not supported by volume. It's not supported by, you know, it's not, the move doesn't make sense. But guess what? Divergence burned makes sense. It, it shows you that it, it's no more. There's no divergence. I don't know. It's, it's pretty clear cut and paste there, right? Like, we're black and white. If it's not there, hey, the move makes sense. If it's there, you know, you, you see something fishy is going on. That's just how it works. Um, and yeah, you don't have those. And I'm going to point out right here, you actually did also burn through triple bull, uh, bearish divergence over here on your CCI. You didn't burn through the whole one, but hey, uh, I'm just going to tell you right now, if you've been looking at this thing and this has been your reason to just continuously go short, all right, um, and the fact that your RSI was just coasting up here, just know, all right, that is not valid. That's not a valid reason to be sitting there going short here, all right? We've been talking about the TA here continuously, day in and day out. You could have, you know, you had plenty of information, other information to go off of other than that. And uh, yeah, guys, I, I'm still going to say, all right, I think you are about to see a big swing down. I, I'm going to be straight up on that one. I think you're going to be a big sell. You're going to see a decent sized sell. I'm not going to say the big sell, all right? Because like, hey, all right. You know, if everyone's watching it, we very much can just swing back down, hit hit 400 over here on SPY, and get, get back to our kangaroo market, all right? I have absolutely no idea how that goes. Which actually, though, if you do take out this, that is going to put in a uh, lower low, and then we're going to have to see if we swing back up, get a uh, lower high, and then take out that low. And that would actually confirm we are likely going lower. We have a downtrend in place. Um, but as right now, guys, we still have this uptrend. That is the thing. Definitely over here on QQQ. This is why I was telling you guys, all right? Guys, bull case was put down on SPY. Uh, bull case was definitely not put down on QQQ. It had, like, you didn't have signs that it was being held back, all right? Buyers were in control. This is what's going on. You're continuously just making these higher highs. It's explosive, all right? Uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to go back to what I've been talking about. Blow off top. I think I brought it up two weeks ago. I think that's exactly what we're seeing. I think we were down here when I started bringing up the blow off top. Um, and now with NVIDIA, now you're really seeing it. Um, but yeah, guys, over here on ES, we did just break out of the pennant. So that is something to note. I'm going to have to, and this is what I'm saying. All right, guys, no bias. You got to see what happens. All right. We have absolutely no idea what comes next. All right. You could very well see this. That would break that high. There we go. All right. That's a breakout right there. Then I would be looking for either back test of that or back test of the pennant. I really would want the back test of the pennant. Um, really just see if this is being respected and then when you break that high that's when you have confirmation like hey all right you're probably going to go up to the next point of resistance which i would be looking at spy for that point of resistance as these gap bills all right you got the 421 you got the 425 50 right there so that is what i will be watching over there 
All right, but uh, yeah, on ES, guys, you did have that pennant breakout, and you could see continuation further up, but keep in mind, all right, if you do get any initial knee-jerk reaction, hey, you know, once they do what they, they do behind the scenes, right, you're going to see, very likely going to see, the stock market declining. That is like QQ, SPY, all right? We, we have seen DIA and IWM just really not participating in uh, this like you, you see what's going on here. I mean, SPY is kind of participating now, but QQ, you clearly see tech sectors leaning everything right now. And IWM and DIA have done absolutely nothing of the sort. I will point out DIA isn't in a, uh, a falling wedge right here slash pennant. I guess now nah, we're going to call this uh, falling wedge. It could also be a bull flag here uh, going off of that. And that could be a thing, but let's actually uh, bring this up right now just because maybe there are some Dow bulls out there. Let's bring this up. All right. Oh, come on, buddy. There we go. Here, BJT. All right, let's put you on a line chart. All right. Come on, bro. Yo, buy signal. Buy signal. Guys, this is why we look at things without a bias. This is the exact reason we look at things without a bias. I don't know what else to say. Transports, higher low. Dow, industrials, lower low. I'm sorry, guys, all right? What I was just saying, all right? I'm going to be straight up. I thought this was going to be the opposite picture. It wasn't the opposite picture. I thought we were going to have confirmation of this low here. No, we don't. We don't have confirmation of the low. There's something to take note of. This is what I was, this is along the lines, guys. We don't know what comes next. Now, I am going to say, like, hey, all right? I still stand behind everything I've just said throughout this video, all right? But this is, again, these are things like factors that are on the board, and we have to keep them in mind, all right? Uh, transports seem to be making higher highs here. Am I looking at this thing wrong? Let me take off the plus, and let me just literally put two charts next to each other here, and just so I can make sure I'm not bugging here. Um, how do I add another chart onto this? Up here, right? Let's go like that. All right. Like that, DJT down here. Let's take off the indicators. All right, let's just see. All right, let's match you up. All right, guys, and these are literally just hey, you want to look for confirmation between these. Like, uh, where was I seeing it? Um, hang on, let me try and match these up. All right, here you go. All right, you see how uh, Dow made this higher high over or higher low over here, but the transports made the lower low. All right. That's 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 your signal. All right. That is the transports not confirming the industrials move right here. All right. But again, like this is something to like this is the opposite of what I just pointed out. All right. So this is the opposite signal of what we just saw. So, you know, it's something to keep note of, all right. This is why I was saying, like, hey, we don't know. And that's why I pointed out earlier in the video, uh, that weekly RSI and QQ has never gone up here. Well, not never gone up during a bear market. I don't know. It probably has, all right. Probably has. I'm not going to look back right now, but during the dot com bubble burst and the 08 market crash, you did not have QQQ's weekly RSI coming up here into overbought territory. And I'm just going to tell you right now, this does look like it looks like a bullish chart, right? We've been talking about QQ, all right? This thing looked like it was, you know, bullish, whereas SPY is just literally traded flat for a very long time. But you are continuously making these higher highs. So we're going to, like, I'm serious, guys. Until you, like, really see a move like that that takes out this 380 over here, which was the March low. Uh, yeah, all right. You're going to be in this kangaroo market. And we're going to have to 100% play it by ear. Uh, at least that's how I'm seeing it. Well, I mean, obviously, we're always going to have to play it by ear. But, um, you know, at least I, I'm i not going to be looking for, uh, you know, I'm going to be looking for a continuation of the kangaroo market unless we come down and like really cause some structural damage which i'm going to tell you right here on the daily time frame all right well you want to see i, I pointed this out earlier you want to see you take out this low all right that's going to put in a lower low and i'm just going to say over here on qq i'm sorry bears on qq all right i'm with you um but guess what all right um you know to really cause some damage to this chart you're going to have to come all the way back down here to 329 all right and that's now 20 dollars lower so uh who knows? You very much so can do something like this. You get down here, all right? Maybe greedy people aren't taking the profits when they're down here coming into, like, you know, Thursday, like a bounce spot over here, all right? And maybe get this bounce up, all right? And then maybe that puts in a lower high, and effectively that would put in your head and shoulders formation right there. And then, uh, you know, you could come down to these lower capitals. 
Uh, I do personally think event like, you know, probably on this, but again, I'm completely open to anything, right? Like, you know, uh, yeah, all right, this week, I'm serious. If you traded with a bias, all right, um, or if you just had a bias, you didn't even have to trade, all right? If you just sat in a position, all right, guess what? It didn't work out. If you had a bearish bias, it didn't work out. And you could have just followed the price action, all right? You literally could have just followed the price action, which told you over here. I was pointing it out on my uh, Weeble updates too. Like, hey, we had things continuously suggest we were going to keep going higher, all right? And, uh, you know, that's I, I made the Weeble update earlier over here just so I could, like, say it, it was before NVIDIA earnings. I was like, oh, okay, things are lining up here. Let me let me make this a little bit early. Um but yeah, guys, that is about it. I don't really have too much else I want to talk your ear off about. All right, you do have DXY rallying alongside QQ and SPY. I, I don't know what it means. I'm not going to lie to you, all right? I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't know what this means, but I'm going to tell you right now. I don't think it's going to be good, all right? I'm uh, sticking to what I was saying back when we were over here, all right, when we were hitting it with the double bottom. All right, when you finally get your daily close over this trend line, I think that is going to be the start of the downturn. All right, start of that big sell. And uh, yeah, I think we got that loading. I, I really do. Uh, but again, all right, this cannot be good going right into that debt ceiling. Now, I'm also going to point out Bitcoin has not participated in this rally on tech. All right. So that is something that I typically see happen. And it's not happening at all. Like not even not even close is it happening. So uh, that is also something to take note of. All right. And we do have 25K price target down there. All right. Last thing I'm going to point out over here is Mr. Vix. Mr. Vic still does have uh, this, excuse me, in the hiccups. Uh, Mr. Vic still does have this 17, excuse me again, 1721 gap filled down there. And I'm actually going to, I'm going to take off that. All right. That's not going to be relevant until we start breaking lows. Um, but I want to point out, you do have your stochastic right here. And we did have, um, you know, over here on QQ, you had that in, and SPY, you had increasing volume, daily volume on SPY on Friday. And then you had increasing weekly volume buy volume on QQ last week. So, you know, this uh, this is just another one of those things of confluence that is going to, uh, you know, if this goes down, we could see those go up and make their highs. And then we see an intraday reversal midweek. Um, that is honestly what I will be looking for. All right. That is what I will be looking for. Um, but coming down here, what is going to be your, uh, what, what am I looking for down here? I'm looking for these oscillators to come down over here exactly like you got over here. All right. Um, I imagine that's going to happen when you come down and fill this gap. And if you guys really just want to see the gap, it's right there. It's right there at 1721. If you get down to the three minute time frame, you actually can see like other gaps. I actually saw this this weekend. Uh, I'm just going to let you guys know. I will not be covering these. I, I don't really care about them. Um, I think I saw, I saw some back here. You got like a little one over here, All right? Which actually that's been filled. All right. Um, yeah, all right. I was just pointing that out. All right, guys. With that being said, I will catch you guys in the next week. Do what you got to do. It's going to be a volatile week. We have the debt ceiling deadline. On, I mean, the official one is June 1st, but like I said, all right, it could be like 7th, 8th, 9th. I don't know. Um, it could. So like, hey, all right, if you are loading data puts up here, I do think it's a, I, I think it's a good decision. I'm going to be straight up with you on that one. All right. But like, hey, do what you got to do. Put enough time in those bad boys uh you know to stick that thing out and uh with that being said i'll catch you guys in the next one peace